So today I see all the presentations are about AI. Everyone is saying AI, AI, AI. It is so boring. My presentation is not only about AI. It is about data. It is about databases. How is the AI made? It is made from data, from a lot of interesting data sets. If we look at the open data sets from the internet, we can get, for example, common crawl that contains uh, a lot of pages, like hundreds of terabytes of data, every month crawled from all the websites. If we are interested in the code to make a coding uh, agent, there is GitHub, there is a lot of open source repositories, and we can just clone uh, like a million of repositories from GitHub to learn our models on that. We can take Wikipedia as like the source of truth, although if we uh, learn our model on Wikipedia, it will be a very boring model. If we want something less boring, we can take and scrape Reddit or download uh, a previous snapshots of Reddit. Or if you want really like non-boring model, you can look at 4chan and also scrape it. Uh, there are many processed data sets like zip file, open web, and so on. And let's look at the sizes of these data sets. Uh, common crawl is about two and a half billion web pages. It is uh, not big, uh, about 500 terabytes of uncompressed data and 100 terabytes of compressed responses. The text size, uh, if we compress it, will be just 10 terabytes. So one monthly crawl will fit on like uh, consumer uh, SSD, just a single one. Wikipedia is quite small. Uh, and on top of cr common crawl, there are processed data sets with filtered like duplicates, with filtered inappropriate content, uh, with uh, filtered out some garbage, and so on. Uh, the most well-known is fine web. Uh, let's analyze this data set, and by analyzing, I mean let's load everything into ClickHouse. And we are happy because many of these data sets are open and published on services like Hugging Face. And Hugging Face hosts an API, and with this API, we can just download all of them in a set of Parquet files. So let's uh, query the API of Hugging Face. With this SQL query in ClickHouse, I will do select from URL, querying the API, and uh, take the list of Parquet files. And there is 26,000 of files with total size of 46 terabytes. So now what I will do, I will generate, uh, I will look at these URLs, and I will generate insert queries to load all of them. But first, about this size. The Total size is like uncompressed will be 73 terabytes. With metadata, it is 81 terabytes and about 25 billion records in 26,000 Parquet files. So let's generate insert uh, queries and let's create a table. To create a table, I don't even have to specify the structure. I can do something like create as select, empty as select, star from URL. And it will infer the data structure automatically, like this table. Create table fine web with a, a few columns like text, string, uh, language, URL, date, and so on. And now let's just take 26,000 insert queries that I format with uh, this uh, uh, format function. And I will load them, uh, load all this data from Hagen Face directly in parallel with 50 threads into ClickHouse. And the question is, how long did it take to load 81.5 terabytes of uh, data from the internet, like all the human knowledge, into ClickHouse database? Any hypothesis? What databases do you use at, at work, at home? <laughs> I don't know. Tell any number, like one minute, one hour, one day. What, 10 minutes? Not bad. Which database do you use at home? What? 
Click house, you know stuff. <laughs> Any more hypotheses? Do you use any other databases other than ClickHouse? No? OK, so the right answer is it took 72 minutes, slightly more than 10 minutes. It is 1 hour and 12 minutes. But keep in mind, we just collected all the human knowledge that is enough to train like open weight uh, model, uh, like Llama, probably Llama 2, uh, something in that category in just uh, slightly more than one hour. And it was 46 terabytes of uh, compressed Parquet files, but in ClickHouse it took just 33 terabytes. And the question is why? Because in Parquet the data is stored uh, in columns, column-oriented format. It is compressed with, with ZSTD codec. In ClickHouse it is also compressed with ZSTD as well. But surprisingly, ClickHouse just does it better. It compresses the data better than, it, than Parquet does. So let's take a look at our data. The first thing is just to run a query and analyze what this data is made of. Let's uh, look at the top domains. What are the most popular websites in the fine web data sets? We run a query. It is quite fast, about one and a half uh, hundred gigabytes a second. And the top one is Wikipedia, then The Guardian, Business Insider, or even Fox News, uh, Tampa Bay, Daily Telegraph, TripAdvisor. It looks quite natural, but probably too much of Wikipedia and news. I would like to see a little bit more diversity in this data set. But anyway, this is the result. But this is not enough. Fine web is definitely not enough. It does not contain a lot of code. If we want code, we took uh, GitHub. And uh, GitHub will contain like 11 billion records and three, more than 300 terabytes. The question is, again, for you, how do I know that GitHub contains about 300 terabytes of all this code with all the forks, all the forks of Linux, all the forks of ClickHouse. How do I know? This is an easy question, easy. Yes, I know because I did it. I loaded all of this data into ClickHouse. We can take Wikipedia and Wikipedia will load in not uh, an hour, not minutes, but just in six seconds. Because it is quite small, it is just 45 gigabytes. We can, uh, if we want scientific papers, uh, we can look at ar archive or archive. But if we train our language model or fine tune on archive, it will learn to speak in a passive voice, which I don't really like. And by the way, all of this data set can fit inside just a single service in ClickHouse Cloud. Because everything can fit in a single service in ClickHouse Cloud. It is scalable. OK, the next thing that we will do is uh, we will compare these styles. How different data sets are? What are the characteristics? How can we compare something like Wikipedia and Twitter? or Reddit and Hacker News, what the difference will be. And I will do a few queries. I will create a table and do the most trivial thing possible. I will count words and count also shingles. It is easy with this one line select query. Array join tokens uh, lower of text. And then I will make this query to find the most contrasting tokens. So the tokens that are the most present in Blue Sky social network and the least present in Hacker News among the popular tokens, and vice versa. Again, the query is easy. I will just divide one number by another number. And let me run this query. OK, let's run it. It is, again, it is fast. 
and on blue sky the top words are social, her, she, him, love, please, hope, today, so much, yeah, fun. On Hacker News, the top is data, Google, system, problem, that it, there are. I found Blue Sky a way more interesting than Hacker News. But actually, I prefer Hacker News. I continued this experiment and analyzed other data sets. So, for example, on Reddit, the top words were action, level, pretty, content, and yourself. And I'm afraid to say what goes before yourself. I checked, but I, I, I will not say you it uh, right now. And on Wikipedia, it was, quite, it was quite boring. But I found that the most unpopular word on Wikipedia is you. You are very unpopular on Wikipedia. And me as well. I don't have a page about me on Wikipedia for some reason. What else? Now, uh, what can we do interesting is actually FineWeb should contain all of these data sets together because it contains like all the internet, the representative uh, sample of the internet, including Reddit, including Twitter, including Hacker News. And what I will do, I will uh, compare the styles about every domain on the internet. And I will construct something like a style fingerprint. It is calculated with this query below. And I define 1024 as a vector size. And I will have 1024 dimensions. Then for each word, for each token, I calculate a hash function. Calculate a remainder of division for the number of dimensions, and then increment the corresponding dimensions and do it repeatedly for every token. So I have this style fingerprints for every website on the internet. And now let's take a look. Does it work at all? Uh, which websites are similar to like my website? My website is uh, clickhouse.com and let me find similar websites. So the most similar website is clickhouse.com, then imply, red panda, planet scale, source graph, confluent, dgraph, airbyte. Uh, so it mostly works. I don't know what is picopong.com, <laughs> but mostly it is correct. That actually, I'm quite surprised because it was such a simple query, just a few lines of code, and I calculated fingerprints for all the websites on the internet. OK, now let's do a more interesting stuff. Threads, trends on the internet. And this is the trend of love on Reddit. And this is the trend of ClickHouse on Reddit. ClickHouse is growing. This is the trend of Hadoop. Hadoop is not growing. This is the trend of blockchain. Blockchain was strong in 2018, and it is still strong, but it is quite volatile. Now let's uh, ask another question. If I have multi-model data sets, like pictures or photos, and I have a data set with one billion of photos from the internet, what should I do with this data set? A few seconds for, the for your answer. What do you think I will do with this data set? One billion photos. Classification. Classification. What? This is obvious. I will load this data set into ClickHouse. But what is next? Find the best, find the best photo. That's a very good hypothesis. It is almost, almost like what I did anymore. What? Merge them together to calculate like an average photo. I think it will be something like a gray blob of nothing. Uh, anymore? Yeah. 
I will put all these photos on the map. This is the map of the density of photos, and I can press a, press a button and find the best photo for each location. So this map contains tiles, and every tile will do a query into Clickhouse in real time and find the best one. And I can select a certain place on a map and also find the best uh, the best photos, and it is qu uh, quite nice. For example, we can do it for Portugal. This website is published, ready for experiments, uh, ready for interaction. So now to the bottom line. What are the takeaways? There are many large, messy, dirty data sets, and typically they are difficult to work with. Difficult to manipulate, but ClickHouse makes everything easy. You have large and massive data sets, you load them into ClickHouse, and now everything is easy and fun if you use ClickHouse. And supposedly, hypothetically, you can put all the internet into ClickHouse, and then the internet will even work faster. Thank you.